So in this video, I wanted to talk about um, discipline um, because this is kind of like, you know, one of those hot, top, hot topics when it comes to parenting. Um, the right way to discipline, how to discipline, when to discipline, um, and, you know, things like that. And so I see <sighs> a lot of parents, especially as an educator, you know, you see a lot of, you know, parents that, you know, struggle with, you know, discipline. And I even had a parent come to me one time uh, because of their child that I taught. Um, and this was before I even had kids. But a parent came you know, to meet with me in my classroom to ask me about what to do with her child. <laughs> and it caught me off guard because I'm like, what, are you serious? Like, I, I should be coming to you for advice, right? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I just want to share a few things because it really doesn't have to be a struggle. It doesn't. Um, so with that being said, the first thing when it comes to, you know, uh, discipline is that as the parent, you need to understand and you need to go ahead and develop that mindset that you are the one that's in charge, not that child. OK, um, you are in charge. So what you say goes. And I like to do a thing where, like with AJ, I give him, you know, options. But the thing is, there are options within what I'm okay with, with what I say is okay. So I give you some options. So that way he feels like he's making choices, but I'm still in control, okay? So he's not getting up first thing in the morning saying, um, I want cookies, and then that's what he gets. No, okay? Um, <laughs> so I could, you know, mention the things that he liked, you know, I could say, you know, oatmeal or ap oatmeal and applesauce because he loves oatmeal with applesauce mixed in it. Um, I got that from my great grandmama because she used to make her oatmeal that way. So then I tried and I was like, it's pretty good. And so then, of course, I shared that with AJ. And he loves it. So I can give him options, oatmeal and applesauce or waffles because I know he loves both of those so either way it's going to be something like yeah I get to have this and really it's me going you're not getting cookies though you're going to get you know some type of breakfast item um and if I do fruit along with it you know I could say do you want cherries or strawberries do you want strawberries or plums do you want peaches or apples give you know those choices but they're within the limits of what I say you know and you know so then that way you know the child feels like you know they're having a say and they're having you know um you know they're having choices and what that does also for them is it, it teaches them how to make choices and how to make um decisions so it's teaching them but you're also setting that boundary okay so with you being the parent and you being in charge you have to set those boundaries okay um so uh well i brought up you know the the parent that came um to meet with me in my classroom to ask about you know what to do about her child because she was asking me this because she knows that i don't have i didn't have any issues with him i didn't have any problems with him and it just just to say, because the first thing came to my mind just now was I better not at. Um, <laughs> and so she was like, but at home, it's, it, I just, she's just like, I don't know what else to do because he won't listen. And, you know, and then I was shocked by this because I'm like, really? He's like such a sweet kid. Like, <laughs> really? Because, of course, y'all know I had a talk with him afterwards. Like, I didn't tell him about everything but I was just like you know I hear you be cutting up at home I'm gonna need you to start you know straightening up don't be giving your mama a hard time like that you know you you get one mama don't be giving her no hard time like that and I'm not playing with you um 
so yeah so she was asking me about that and you know at first I was just like I don't I was like I'm like I don't I know what to tell her <laughs> so I was like what you expect from me <laughs> um because I was like in my like third or fourth year of teaching I'm just like what you, what you expect for me you're the one with a middle school kid I don't even have kids of my own yet like I don't know um because because then the first thing I wanted to say was you better cut his behind um <laughs> Because that can be very effective, you know, <laughs> get it behind cutting. And then what I like to do is dare them. You know, you give them that, you know, that discipline. And um, well, you give them the consequence. OK, because the, the actual discipline is teaching the child to make the right decisions. OK. Because whenever we have to discipline ourselves, we have to keep ourselves from doing bad things and do what's right. So like a lot of us like to say that, you know, we're on diet, <laughs> you know, so then we have to discipline ourselves to not go and buy a big carton of ice cream or we're driving down the road and we see that hot light on. We have to be disciplined and not have to swerve and fly into Krispy Kreme Park a lot to get those, you know, hot dozen. Yeah. Let's see, right now, now I want some. But yeah, so that's what discipline is. You're teaching the child to make right decisions, okay? And so it comes with consequences and consequences you have negative consequences you have positive consequences in the classroom I always like to explain that to my students you know you're gonna have negative consequences you're gonna have positive consequences so when you do things that are wrong you're gonna have negative consequences when you do things that's right you're gonna have positive consequences so they're not thinking it you only get consequences when you do something bad. You get consequences with everything you do. So based on what it is that you're doing, it's either going to be negative or positive. And then you're supposed to learn from that because you want more of the positive consequences. And when you start making more decisions that lead towards more positive consequences, then you're, you're becoming more disciplined. And so that's what it is to discipline your children you're teaching them to make the right decisions and you're not just um letting them get away with stuff and a lot of things no matter how big or how small a lot of things you have to just nip it in the bud like it you have to let them know right away that this is not okay and don't you ever do it again and this is where my daring comes in you know, so they'll get that negative consequence where it may be me talking to them like real seriously, like I'm not playing with you, you know, um, <laughs> or, you know, I had to do like, you know, I have parents there because my mama, she, she had a, well, she had several switches, but I used to take them and break them up into pieces, throw them behind the couch. Um, yeah, so I have a switch, you know. And it's great for you because you can get good reach too, especially with me being pregnant. Oh, real good reach, you know. Boop, 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 pop those little legs. Sit down. Stop that. Cut that out, you know. And, you know, and it's teaching them that, okay, mama does not want me to do this. And if I do this, this is the consequence I'm going to get. So then they have to make the, the decision. Do I want to keep doing this or... Am I going to stop? Should I stop? I think I'm going to stop. And like for, you know, <laughs> my baby, Amari, he tends to uh, keep doing things, you know. And so then that's when, you know, you have to do, you have to do something to teach that, because that's what it's all about, okay. It's all about teaching them. So I have to do something to teach him what's okay and what's not okay. And when, some, when he's doing something that's not okay, like he likes to throw toys, like he likes to throw things and he likes to mess with everything. You know, he's at the age where he's, you know, pulling stuff down, taking stuff, tearing stuff up, you know, and it's just like, oh, kid, stop touching stuff. 
So it, it's having to, you know, teach him that no. And I, I teach him by using my words, by talking to him and exposing him to the language of, you know, hearing me explain things. Because I feel like, well, I've always wanted to be the type of parent that explained things to my kids. Because um, I know we, we try so hard to try to be the opposite of what our parents were. And we forget to do the things that actually work. And so there were a lot of things that my parents did that worked. But I also want to include, so that's the thing. I want to include things that they didn't do a lot of. Um, and which, I mean, we, we did, we talked about a lot of stuff. So I just want to make sure I do more of that. So even at a young age, I will explain stuff to him. And I will like take him because, you know, because I'm very big on losing privileges too. Because, I mean, of course, my kids, they don't have all the stuff that a lot of these kids have nowadays. Like, all of this technology stuff, no, we're not playing that. Because um, me, as a middle school teacher, I see what all of that does to the kids. And for one, it's exposing them to a whole lot. Because do y'all realize that, you know, getting your kids, oh, my kid, my child got a phone, got a cell phone because all the other kids got cell phones. I got to get my baby one too. Do you know what all they have access to on this simple device? No, I'm not putting that in the hands of my child. No, no, you can say what you want about me, but no. Mm -mm. So, um, yeah, so seeing what, you know, what that does to, you know, middle schoolers, Mm -mm. they 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 have access to way too much and they've been exposed to too much so my kids they don't have all of that so their privileges are like you know you know playing with you know their toys or um uh aj well both of them really they like to watch the little cartoons little baby bum or dave and ava um so i've just subscribed to them on youtube and so We'll sit together in the living room and, you know, and watch those on the TV together with me right there in control. And so, yeah, so if they don't listen, because I feel like if I had to say something twice, that's too much. Because I meant that thing the very first time I said it. So if I have to say it twice, you, 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 you trying me. And so when it gets to the point where I realize, like, okay, you're not listening, you're about to lose privileges, turn the TV off, um, put the toys up, you're going to sit down, and you're going to be quiet, you're not going to move until I tell you to. And so what I'm doing there is teaching them to listen and follow directions, you know, so you're not going to move until I tell you to. And, you know, and they, of course, they hate that. And I know it because I hated it. That was like the worst thing my mama could do to me. Like she would make me stand in the corner and I hated that so much because I'm the type that like to be all up in everybody's conversation and hear what everybody's talking about and things like that. And so whenever I got in trouble and I had to stand in the corner, so my mom had this specific corner. It was like in the kitchen. So we had to just like stand in the corner, face like in the corner, y'all. And we couldn't talk. It could not turn around. And if we turned around, we I, basically the time that she, whatever time, because she never told us how long that we needed to stay there. She knew how long she was going to have us stay there. But if we turned around in her head, that time to start all the way back over. And I did the same thing with my middle schoolers. When they were cut up in class, I didn't do lunch detention. I'm like, no, your behind gonna stand up at the wall <laughs> in the cafeteria. I would make them stand up at the wall. If they turn around, you got another day. And they like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, well, face that wall, keep your mouth shut. 
and you know a lot of them you know they would get the point like dog this this because you're serious about this let me just stay here and face the wall and they stay there and face the wall going through their little torture and then you know they serve their time and they they're all but yeah if they talk or they turn around you got another day we'll sit here and do this every day until you learn to follow directions discipline it's all about getting the child to make the right choices okay so you want them to make the right choices so the wrong choices you want the negative consequences you want the consequences to be something where they don't want to make that wrong choice you understand so that's why you know parents gave you know the whoopings and because you know everybody now is just like freaking out about people whooping their kids oh my gosh how can you do that to them child please um <laughs> so yes i will i will cut behind um but it's that's what it's for and people are like missing that point and it's probably because a lot of people don't realize that or don't know that and they cut behind just because they mad <laughs> and they just cut behind because they just feel like kid do something wrong let me whoop you and not realizing that this whole discipline thing is a teaching process maybe it's easier for me to realize it because i'm an educator but i guess i really understand it because i i just saw how well it worked you know for me growing up like some things you know yeah you're just like my mommy daddy me i'm gonna run away you know typical kid stuff but that's when after they get that negative consequence as the parent that's when you come in and you do the talking part because a lot of parents they miss the talking talk to your kids now come here let me talk to you for a minute now when you sat here and you did this that and the third and i told you how many times not to do that how many times did i tell you to stop and you sat there and kept doing it right and so you're talking through the process of what it was that they did wrong and you're explaining to them like you did this and how many times did I tell you and you 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 see why it became such a big problem and then and then you explain the consequences so because it it you you know you you had it build up to such a big problem that's why this happened to you so next time what are you going to do and then you explain to them next time this is what I need you to do so from this from this point on, when I say such and such, this is what better happen, you know. And I mentioned earlier about the daring, um, <laughs> the children. So this this always worked like for my students too. And it's just one of those things where you you give that negative consequence when they do something wrong that needs to be stopped right then and there. Um, and you pretty much you you dare them to do it again. Where you, you know where your parents be like do it again. You know, <laughs> and for me, because, you know, I think about all this stuff, but for me, I know that that's not just something to say. There's something to that because you're teaching the child, um, okay, so you just learn what will happen when you do this certain behavior. Now, you want to sit here and keep playing with me, do it again, and let's see what happened next. <laughs> and then that's when the child learns to make that decision. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> no, way, no. Mm -mm. no ma'am. <laughs> oh, you know, they, you know, they get to the point, they want to like bad talk, you know, whatever negative consequence that you have for nipping that as soon as it happens, because that's what needs to happen you don't sit there and let that child keep back talking you and then you get mad about it and then they just keep they keep doing it you better nip that thing as soon as it happens because they need to know from the very beginning that is not okay i am not tolerating that okay because what you deal with with you know your kids is a choice there are things that you can choose to deal with and there are things that you just not mm -mm, you just not having it and I already had that mindset, you know, when I went into the educational field, because I just knew already, because, you know, 
teachers when I was growing up, they would say pet peeves, but I already had certain things that I just was not going to tolerate, not. And even as a parent, I'm, there are certain things I am not going to tolerate, none, at all, not at all, no, mm. <laughs> no. So, like, let's say the child want to bad talk you. Um, so, you nip that then, right, right then and there. And then when they, you know, see or feel or, you know, have experienced whatever that negative consequence is, because um, it, it needs to be something that will help them make that decision, don't you do that again. So, after you give that consequence, then you, like, throw out that dare. Now, uh, say something else to me again. Say something else. I dare you. You know, you can go ahead and say that, too. <laughs> I dare you to say something else. And they're going to be like, I love you, mama. <laughs> they're going to keep their mouth shut. <laughs> And so then, of course, after everything has, you know, settled down, then you go in and you talk to them. Like, come here, let me talk to you. When we were uh, having a discussion earlier and then you wanted to sit there and pop off at the mouth with blah, 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 that was not okay. Let me explain to you why that's not okay. And then you explain it. And then, you know, and the child, they may say that, oh, I didn't mean to, or blah, 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 whatever it is. Um. Cause I know when I used to give trouble for bad talking, it wasn't that I was trying to be disrespectful. It was just, I was trying to make my point, but I needed to learn as the child that that was not the time or my place to sit there and try to make my point. That was the time and the place for me to just shut my mouth and go and follow directions, do what I was told. And, um, and that's what the child needs to understand. So we have to explain that to them. So when we having that discussion, you let them know, like, so next time, when I tell you to keep your mouth shut, you keep your mouth shut. If I tell you to go do something, you just simply go do that. Now, if you got something else to say or something you want to explain, we'll talk about that later. But at that time, when I tell you to do something, you go do that. And you just, you explain that, you know, to them. And you be serious about it, you know, because they need to understand, well, I'm not playing. So... And But you're also letting them know that there will be a time for us to hear each other out. Because as a parent, we want our kids to understand, okay? And But we also need them to follow directions when we say it. And a lot of times in those moments, that's not the time for them to sit there and try to, you know, explain themselves and things like that. That's not the time. It's the time to follow directions do what you were told do it now okay because i ain't gotta sit here and just wait on you to follow directions when you get good and ready you're the child you living in my house what i just gave you or just told you my rules you better follow that now and um so yeah so there needs to be that that you know consequence and there <clears throat> needs to be um the talking okay it needs to be that talking sit down and talk with with your kids if they have questions about something because I know I used to have like I used to have like a lot of questions like like uh, you know I wanted to ask like why did I get in trouble for that because I don't understand why I got in trouble for something and and so and then my parents would explain to me like why and why it was not okay and it was like oh yeah, I see that. Because as children, they don't understand all of that. They don't see all of that. They just see what they want, what they want to do, what's fun, and all of that. They don't see um, how doing or saying certain things, um, how it, you know, affects a bigger picture that they don't even realize is there. So as parents, we have to help them understand that and we can't we can't um we can't just we can't just be light with it um for lack of a better word 
we have we have to be serious with it but we have to have that you know that environment for them where the children where they feel like they can come to us and you know ask us for understanding um and that they understand that that we actually want the best for them and we want them to do their best and and that all of this comes from love because you know there's you know if you all know you know the parents you know back in the day whoop the kid i'm doing this because i love you and then the kids like what this is love but this is why i say that communication also needs to happen because that communication just kind of helps bring everything full circle it helps connect everything so it's like oh that's what they mean by they're doing this for love because what I did was wrong and it could have led to that, which could have put me in danger. So they were seriously, you know, they seriously did not want me to do that. So that's why I got this consequence because I got this bad of a consequence because that's how bad they don't want me to do it because that's how bad they want me to be safe and to do well help your kids understand that okay help your kids make those connections and along with you know discipline discipline you know like punishments and things like that it doesn't have to be like all the time sometimes you know i say most of the time you have fun with your kids you know show them the positive things you know of life and show them fun show them that you know you are a happy person or whatnot and i think that helps too with the discipline um because i know that helped me a lot um as a teacher middle schoolers y'all middle schoolers okay so having fun with the kids because you know a lot of teachers they like to say don't let the kids see you smile i never i never went along with that Cause I'd be in there all just cheesy. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all enjoying y'all first day of school? Y'all look like y'all scared. Y'all scared? Don't be scared. It's gonna be a good year. So yeah, so I'd be, <laughs> I'd be in there just smiling and carrying on. But the reason why that works for me is because when I get like this, they know. Miss McCutcheon ain't playing. <laughs> y'all better straighten up. And then that's why also you're able to like, you know, get order and get cooperation and have your children, you know, for me, my students and of course, yeah, my children now too, um, to get, you know, cooperation and get them to follow directions or get in, in alignment to what they're supposed to be doing by just a simple look. Because they know that you like to have fun and you love them and you love on them. But when you get serious and your face change or your tone changes, they just know just by that, oh, let me straighten up. My daddy used to do that with us all the time. Me and my brother, we go to cutting up the stuff at the, at the dinner table while we eating. And we get a little too <laughs> rambunctious or whatnot. All my daddy had to do was, and we, <laughs> we, <laughs> Go on, get quiet and go right right back to eating. <laughs> and, you know, and that was a big part why. Because my daddy, he would just roll around and play with us, come sit in the room, play with the toys with us, and, you know, take us, you know, up the road to the gas station, get us some treats and stuff. Like, we had fun with daddy. And so when he would do something like that, it was like, oh, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm -mm. He, he, he real serious right now. We're straighten up. Okay? Um, so yeah, so my, my biggest advice though, like just like if I were to just summarize, like just to give out just some quick tips would be don't let, don't let stuff slide because when they slide, they just continue to escalate and then you end up with an even bigger problem. Um, and it starts just from the moment the child is able to listen and follow directions um 
So like when they're crawling and they're getting ready to like crawl and reach and touch something, you ah, nope. You know, take pop their little hand or whatnot. You're teaching them, mm -mm, nope, don't you do that. And they're like, oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> don't want that to happen again. Because mm. they'll remember that the next time they're looking at something, they're trying to reach and they'll remember that. Um, <laughs> hey, my husband did that with me. <laughs> Because he was like, you know, so set on opening doors for me and stuff. And I was, you know, Miss Independent Woman. And I'm like, I don't need you to open doors for me. I can open my own doors. And it was one day we was at a store and I went to open the door and he popped my head. I was like, what? I'm like, he's serious about opening the doors for me. He popped my head <laughs> and he opened up the door and he gave me that look like I'm opening this door for you now. And so ever since then, because like even now, you know, I just, you know, I just forget because, you know, if I'm out doing stuff when, you know, he's like at work and something, so of course I have to open my own doors. So when I'm out with him, so sometimes I forget and I'll be about to reach. And every time I'm about to reach, I remember that moment. And I'm like, ooh. And I'll look at him and be like, you, you go ahead. <laughs> and he'll look at me and smile and be like, uh <laughs> But yeah, so it's, that's what discipline is. It's just teaching you how to make the right decisions, okay? So just like as adults, we discipline ourselves to do, same, to do certain things or not do certain things. It's the same thing, okay? So we got to get out of this whole idea of, you know, letting, you know, our children decide how things are run. They don't know. They don't know any better. We are the ones that know better. We are the ones that know the outcomes of certain behaviors. We are the ones that know that if they keep up with certain things, what that will lead them to as they grow up. We are the ones that know all of that. So we have to teach them and train them, you know, to make the right um, decisions, <clears throat> the right choices. And be there to talk to them, to explain things, to help them understand. Um, because we, we don't want them to grow up doing things that they don't even understand either. Okay? Um, but, yeah. So, like I was saying, if I were to just give, like, just some quick tips for discipline. Yes, don't let anything slide. Um, uh, that's, that's, like, that's like a big one. Don't let anything slide. Remember, you are in charge, okay? So you go ahead and have that mindset. You're the one that's in charge, okay? So if you don't want that child screaming right now, you in charge. Make it stop, okay? Um, if you don't want, you know, if you don't, because you, it's your, it's your home. You decide what's what. Like me, I have certain rules now. I don't like toys in my kitchen. I don't like it because people are walking around in the kitchen because you're either doing dishes or you're cooking. So you're walking around. Nobody got time to be sitting there tripping and falling and getting hurt over no toys. Get them toys out my kitchen, you know? <laughs> so, and you stick to it. You don't just say stuff, this is not allowed, and but you don't follow through. That's a big one too. Follow through. When I first worked at the daycare, um, and it was my, it was, well, it wasn't my first day there, but it was my first day working in one of the other classrooms that I wasn't originally assigned to, and this was when I saw a perfect example of not following through what you say, and the girl told the child, if you keep doing this because the child was running across the classroom and he was hitting her and he was spitting on her and I'm sitting there watching like what in the world is happening here and she kept saying I'm gonna give you time you're gonna be in time out if you don't stop but the kid kept doing it he kept doing it he kept doing it he never got time out I'm like so why are you saying that don't say things to your kids that like don't say that this is gonna happen and then they do it again and it don't happen. Cause then they can't take anything you say seriously. 
because they they now you they can't believe you now because you said you were gonna do something but you didn't do that so now oh you just talking and so this two-year-old realized that she was just talking and just to go ahead and tell y'all this story and then i'm gonna go ahead and end this video so because some may some people may be wondering so he he tried the little two-year-old in the classroom so he tried to mess with me so i already had the mindset of what i tolerate and what i do not tolerate and i will never ever tolerate a child putting their hands on me or spitting on me anything disrespectful no we not having that and so he he looked at me and, and he had like this look in his eyes like ooh fresh meat and, <laughs> and so i'm looking i'm just looking at him because i probably just had like a look on my face like yeah i'm fresh meat what am i going to do but in my head i'm like come over here and try me and see what's gonna happen and so <laughs> so he ran at me had his hand out ready to hit because that's what he was doing he was running and he'll run by pow and slap you as he ran by and if you tell him to stop or whatnot he spit on you so he came and he ran at me with his hand out and i got his hand before he could lay hands on me and i got his hands and i took him and i put him in front of me i you know we were face to face and I looked at him and I was like, no, sir, you are not doing that. We are not having that. And I took him and I sat him down. And I just had like just real serious voice. And I'm like, that is not okay. That is a no-no. We're not doing that. And then he's just like stunned, like what in the world? And he tried to get up. And as he was trying to get up, I took him, sat him right back down. No, sir, you are not getting up. You're going to sit down. And he was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and started crying and then so he he's doing you know so all of this happened so i i use my serious voice my serious face because i'm not playing with you because we not we're not doing that because you're not coming and hitting miss amy oh no and um so he's crying so when he settled down and stopped crying i went and sat down with him and i talked to him I'm like, hey, what you were doing, that's not okay. That's not nice. You don't do your teachers like that. And I asked him, I'm like, why do you do that? Why do you do that? And so eventually, now, because he, he was very good at conversation. And eventually it just came out that because he was the last student, because he was, he was the only one left. Because um, his mom would come and get him like right at closing time or a little bit after so he was like the last kid in there so he didn't know all of the words to say that but I put it together what he was telling me and basically it was just he was bored all his friends had gone home and he was bored so I'm like well you don't have to act that way you know because all of your friends are gone and I told him I said but we can do some fun stuff and it's just 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 fun stuff that just you can do when you're the only one here and I was like, wouldn't you like that? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, let's do that. So the things, you know, that, that you know, they really couldn't do uh, when all of the students were there, he got to do when he was, you know, on his own. And I don't want people to look at that and think that, oh, now he's being rewarded for his behavior. No, he had, he spent his time sitting there and he learned that Miss Amy was not playing like that. We're not doing that. He learned that very quickly. But he also learned that if I just do what I'm supposed to do, like if I do um, what's nice, that especially with Miss Amy, we can do something fun that I don't get to do while everybody else is here. And so whenever I was working in there in the room with him, I didn't have any behavior problems anymore out of him not ever since that first time i had problems with with him and now yeah he still calls chaos for <laughs> some of the others but for me i ain't have any issues and that's why even as a middle school teacher i didn't have issues with a lot of the kids they would go and get in all kinds of troubles in their other classes but for me 
it was just because from the very beginning, the first time you do something wrong, I'm letting you know we're not doing that. And <laughs> and um, but I will also come back and do the talking. Like, look, this is not okay. And a lot of times I needed to get understanding from them. Why are you doing this? What were you thinking when you did that? And then, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, okay, I understand that. I understand that. And then I would even tell them, you know, like, like repeat it, but like in my own words. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause you kind of feeling like such and such, such and such. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, I got you. But look, there's a different way to handle it. It's all about teaching them. Okay. So discipline is all about teaching them. Now, this video was supposed to be <laughs> short and sweet and to the point, but I guess with talking about discipline, I guess it just, it takes a little bit more time, but I am done. So I shared the story, but yeah, so um, don't let stuff slide. Um, talk, communicate with your children, okay? And follow through with what you say, all right? I would say those three main things. Don't you sit there and let stuff slide and don't let stuff slide just because people are looking. No, my children know you're going to behave whether we are at home or whether we just in a crowd of a million people, you are going to behave. I am your parent, not these other people. I have the responsibility of teaching you how to behave yourself. Okay. So remember that. Okay. Um, so if y'all have any other questions or if you want me to give like some more details or or anything, I can do like another video later on, like maybe on like some specifics. Like if y'all like have like specific situations where you just like, okay, so this is going on, this is going on. How would you handle this? Let me know. And you know, we can we can talk about that because that was like, you know, with me as a teacher, that was like my thing. You know, classroom management. That, that was my thing. I mean, to have student, middle school students walking in a straight line and silent in the hallway, middle schoolers. But see, the thing is, it may have looked like I was just this hard, mean, just, you know, strict behind teacher. But the thing is, we were playing a game in the hallway. <laughs> We we in the hallway playing a quiet game. So yeah, they walking in the straight line and they quiet because they trying to win the game. So when we get back in classroom, they can get some candy. <laughs> but that's what you gotta do. That's the positive consequences, you know, that positive reinforcement. You get the kids to make the right decisions by providing them with some positive stuff in return, you know. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And so if y'all watched all the way to this point, yeah, go on ahead and subscribe so, you know, we can talk about some of this stuff some more. Um, so, yeah, so go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and subscribe because, like I said, this was supposed to be a very short and sweet video. So if you have watched to this point, go ahead and subscribe because we probably have some more um, to talk about and um <laughs> so yeah hit that subscribe button hit the bell so that way you know when i upload the next video and i will see y'all in the next video <laughs> bye